What's up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of the Backstage Slam Wrestling Podcast. My name is Ben, and I'm joined by my tag team partner, Joshua. It is episode number 181, and it is time for the event that we've all been waiting for for the last three months. AEW presents Revolution. Josh, are you hyped? You say you want a revolution, well, you know, we all want some freshly squeezed. So, uh, you just recently finished the Go Home Show. Yes. For AEW. Day behind and a dollar short, just like always. (laughs) Um, so... Let's get your fresh take on on what you thought. For me, I I messaged you real quick, and I said, uh, Josh, I thought that that was the best build up to an American pay per view in a very very long time. Uh, do you agree? Yeah, it wasn't bad. It uh, it lacked in some areas, but I don't think any any of it was the build. During the Iron Man match, you know, there were some key moments that. I thought might have been rushed a bit where uh, Pac was doing uh, Zack Sabre Jr. decided, you know what? I'm not hurt anymore, so let's move on. But other than that, uh, I, I, I have no complaints. I thought it was largely done well, especially when they started, I don't want to say putting matches together at the last second, but, you know, those uh, those final additions to the card uh, needed a reason to happen, and they took the time to make sure there was a reason it's going to happen. I mean, for instance, uh, Pac and um, Orange Cassidy, it's like there's really no reason for them to be there, but since they decided to have the match, they gave them a reason to have the match. And that is more than the WWE has been willing to do for some of their matches in recent memory. Especially <laughs> how, many, <clears throat> how many times over the last year, over the last two years, have we been like freaking out like, are, how, how, how are we going to get the picks done? Because we don't know what the card is yet. And <laughs> it's this weekend. So yeah. Well, luck, luck, luckily the timing for this one worked very, worked out very well. I remember the last eight, nine WWE pay per views. It's like, oh, Josh, we're missing half the card, and it's already Saturday. And then all of a sudden they start dropping matches late Saturday night, early Sunday morning, and then they still add some more matches during the kickoff show. And then it just poo poos our. That's why over half of half the field of our pay-per-view predictions uh has pretty much quit it's because they're you know they can't make it online you know because they have a full-time job or whatever and they can't hop on discord at the last second just to update their pay-per-view picks with all the new matches and it, it, it really sucks that that has to happen but Luckily that we added AEW to the mix, and I think that a lot of people um, have been wanting to do more pay-per-view predictions outside of the WWE stuff, which is a breath of fresh air. It really is. And I think we are doing our part uh, by adding them to the pay-per-view predictions game. Uh, We're doing our part to kind of give people a reason to watch that might not normally give it a chance. Mm-hmm. It's it's like when I uh, when I first started playing fantasy football, I was never a huge football fan. I had my team, you know, the one that I support casually. But then when a friend said, "Hey, you want to play some fantasy football?" and I'm like, "I don't know what that is, but fantasy's cool." And they got me in the league, and next thing you know, I'm like, players and stats are important. I better keep <laughs> an eye on this. Yeah. And now I'm, you know, the 2019 Backstage Lane Fantasy Football Champion. The rest is history. 
All right. Um. Other than that, uh, did you watch last week's Dynamite episode? I no no the no. Steel I cage didn't. match. I was, I was in the hospital. Okay. Were you, were you able to see the highlight from that steel cage match? Uh, I saw the highlights that they showed tonight. Okay. How about that uh, moonsault from Cody? I thought he broke his leg at first. Yeah, he might have. It's not like he'd show it. <laughs> um. Okay, let's start off with the uh, very, very, very first match. Uh, just recently got added a couple of hours ago. This is going to be on the on the pre-show, and it's going to be SCU versus the Dark Order. The Dark Order promised that uh, that something was going to happen. I think. Uh, are we going to see who? Finally, is the Exalted One? I don't know. Um, Every time the Dark Order has put out a great video vignette and a great promo, uh, it's just something in their wrestling matches that ends up pulling a step backward. And I think a lot of it has to do with the Creepers. Now, with that said, Joshua, Mm -hmm. uh, the Creepers have been somewhat... um, should I say missing except for the ones that we've seen with the, you know, the known indie talents. I think it was uh, John silver. And I, and I forgot the other guy uh, where we also saw on like on the YouTube channel where they got recruited to the dark order. And then there's still a, a whole bunch of these other guys. Maybe they're hired acts. Maybe they're uh, just extras or whatnot that, that are at wrestling school. We don't know, but I think the dark order um, represents itself well when we know who is under those masks, and they're not, and they don't come off as corny, at least for me. So, if they start going forward and they start poaching people to join the Dark Order that is already known acts within AEW or known acts that is within the indie scene, and they pull them into the Dark Order, but they are. You know, they are the goons that come out there and then everybody is like, oh, they're not just randoms, you know, by that guy's tattoos, that's so and so and so. And, oh, that guy's John Silver because of his hair. And and that's the other dude, the first dude that got recruited by the Dark Order. I think uh, if we kind of know who is who are who the creepers are, maybe maybe I don't know. Who knows? Maybe SU loses this match uh because i'm i'm picking a dark order to win this match i think uh they're gonna have a slow build to winning their first tag team titles and it won't be until later this summer i think it's gonna be at uh all in or all out um but i do see the dark order winning the tag titles later on this year and it's probably gonna be between the two guys that are currently wrestling, the two teams that are currently wrestling for the match and that uh, four-way elite tag team championship. But I'm picking the Dark Order, and I think that Christopher Daniels is going to be joining the Dark Order. Um, Like I said, if, if he ends up putting the mask on sometime during the match or after the match and he ends up backstabbing SCU... And then he can go back to being, uh, you know, if he ends up breaking away from the Dark Order, we'll get to see Fallen Angel, you know, for on his last run. And then he ends up rejoining SDU and then ends up retiring from entering competition or oh, later on down the line. I think that would be a great thing for him. But I think Dark Order wins this. And I think shocking, something shocking and developing is going to come after this. A lot of people are expecting Matt Hardy announcement and all that stuff. I think it's just too soon. I think it's way too expected. I But I do see a new member. If not Christopher Daniels, then we get to see a new member joining the Dark Order. And uh, that's that's my pick for the uh, the kickoff show. We got uh, Dark Order over SCU. Josh, uh, how do you feel about these two teams match up history? Where do you see the Dark Order? Uh, from your standpoint, and who do you have winning this match? Oh, that's a lot of questions, man. You Take really want me to bring the heat today. Yeah. Um, 
Well, I kind of want to stretch this out over an hour because I I really love this card. Well, I'm sorry. Uh, but... Like the other pay-per-view that uh, happened this morning while we were all sleeping. I didn't care. <laughs> this one, I very much care. Yeah, I did uh, throw in the description that we would briefly talk about that. Yeah, we'll but, do that at the end. Yeah, like set a set a clock, two minutes. <laughs> That's all I'm. Well, oh, before to give it. before we get get that, uh, I am going to be doing a quick review show on Twitch on Saturday after the pay per view. Uh, you want to tag along, or is that uh, wait and see type of thing? I'm sorry, I, I wasn't listening. I'm going to be doing <laughs> a review. <laughs> I'm going to be doing a, I know J- Josh has been in the uh, in, in the uh, hospital for a few days with an infection everybody um but I'm going to be doing an immediate AEW backstage slam episode review immediately after um the pay-per-view on Saturday are you keen on that or is it a wait and see thing for you you know what on um, what's going we on? can tentatively pencil it in and uh if anything comes up you know, I'll just leave you hanging. All right. Okay. I'm still going to do... So, basically, uh, this episode was supposed to happen this past weekend, but we only had four matches on the docket. Now we got eight. So, we're going to be doing two ep- BSP episodes this weekend for you guys to make up for that. All right, Josh. SCU versus Dark Order. You know what? I am going to take SCU. Okay. Because I think... Uh... They are stronger than ever, and it's just unfortunate they're going to have to pick up this victory in the worst town they've ever been in. All right. Uh, what is your feelings on both teams or stables? I mean, SC, SCU is... is how, how do you describe them? Quintessential uh, awesomeness? You know, they've got... Uh, more experience between them than, uh, you know, uh, some locker rooms I can name, you know, as far as years in the business. Mm-hmm. And and the Dark Order, I, ga- I gotta be honest, I haven't really been following very closely. Okay. Mostly because uh, the last couple weeks I have been really, really out of it. Alright, no problem. How do you see the match going down for your SCU victory? You know what? The way I see it is uh, it's, you know, a very close competitive match. And SCU picks up a straight pinfall victory, right? And it'll lead to kind of what you said where the Dark Order is something happens. Right, something happens mm-hmm. with the Dark Order, but I think it'll be because of their failure that uh, something uh, happens. Uh, whether it's a new member or you know the exalted one, whatever it is, I think it'll be because uh, one of the recruits it, gets kicked out for messing up. Right, something will okay. happen because that's, of that's that's failure. Interesting, yeah. And what do you do when someone fails? Yeah, you, you cut off the the bad limb. Awesome. All right, for those of you guys in the chat, give us your pick. We are still on the first match: uh, SCU versus Dark Order. Who you guys got? Um, Josh has SCU. I got Dark Order coming up let us know in the chat all right let's move on to the main card uh arguably from twitter the most anticipated matchup in history of aew Pac versus orange cassidy josh yes. i have a feeling you're mar- you're gonna mark up for this match who you I got am uh, i am not on the blindly pick Orange Cassidy train yet because I want points <laughs> so I'm <laughs> I'm definitely I'm definitely picking Pac but after um, the best friends match tonight or last night 
I was almost convinced when I heard that Orange Cassidy might, he just might try. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, That got a pop from the crowd after that segment on Dynamite last night. Um, I seen Orange Cassidy wrestle everybody, including John Moxley, uh, before Mox... Uh, officially came to AEW. This guy can go. And I can't wait to see the high-flying stuff that these two pull on. But, yeah, I, I also have to agree with you. I'm going to go with Pac. I think this is an easy one. But uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Orange Cassidy gets help and ends up beating Pac. But either way, uh, I don't see Pac slowing down. I, I think Pac is... Going to have another big match with Kenny Omega. They're going to do... I think AEW is going to do everything they, they can do to throw as much stuff at Kenny Omega to keep him out of the main event scene as long as possible. Uh, just so that you know Jericho or Moxley can actually have more time with the championship depending on the outcome to, uh, to, uh, Saturday night for those two guys. So... I, I, I see Pac with the victory here only so that he can continue his feud with Kenny Omega. All right. Let's see. Uh, Chris Statlander versus Nyla Rose for the AEW Women's Championship. Uh, we're going to have to go with Chris Statlander on this one. I know. I know. Nyla Rose just won the championship. But I think it was a necessary step for the company to do it um, because Riho is still, she still has a lot of uh, obligations to fulfill at Stardom and um, other places in Japan. They needed to get the belt on TV as much as possible. I know that uh, Nyla Rose was my pick uh, for the, for the, the first championship match. But I don't know, like, for me personally, I think the AEW women's division is currently in the middle of its reboot stages. You know, they got rid of the biggest, they got rid of the biggest problem, which was the the Brandy Rhodes cult, um, what do you call that, stable, what was it, the Nightmare Collective, something like that, so they got rid of the something Nightmare like that, Collective, yeah. uh, so Brandy left that stable. It's dissolved, but we don't know what came of Mel. We don't know what came of that dude, Luther. Um, we haven't seen them since the dissolve of that uh, two to three weeks ago. Um, hopefully, they can be repackaged or be reused in another way. But this reboot for the division has done excellent uh we starting to see better women's matches on dynamite and on ew dark but i think going forward i think uh, chris statlander is the first big name that could actually set the tone for this division going forward um but i wouldn't be surprised if nyla rose wins but if she wins i think it's a dirty victory but I'm going to go against the grain on this one. I have a feeling Nyla Rose is going to win. But Chris Statlander is my number one women's wrestler in the world right now. Followed by Hikaru Shida. Um, so I've been saying this. I You heard me talk about her before she got signed, Josh. I got to go all in on Chris Statlander. Who you got? You're such a hipster, Ben. I, I, I was a fan know. before she was big. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm I'm just messing. Um, I I picked Nyla Rose because I don't think it's time for her to lose the title. Right. Uh, of course, as the saying goes, the money's in the chase. So mm-hmm. I don't think it should be you know a one and done. Get some uh, get some experience under that belt and let it mean something uh, when the title eventually gets dropped. And it doesn't it doesn't even have to be like. 50 defenses it's just three or four really good defenses and in a title drop that's fine but i don't think now is the time for nyla to drop 
the title. So I'm picking uh, her to retain. Like for me personally, like you, you and I are on the same page as we don't like hot, hot potatoing championships. But here, I don't really mind. I really don't mind at all. Um, there are positives of keeping the belt on Nyla Rose, uh, especially to continue to promote inclusivity and you know that they do tout LGBT champions and and all that, but. I'm looking at it from the perspective as how this division can have a strong foundation. And I believe that Chris Statlander is the far and away better pro wrestler all around than Nyla Rose is. So that's my basis of wanting her to pick up the victory. By all means, Chris Statlander should win the title from her. Just probably not yet. But like I said, I'm picking her going against the grain. But I, I do have a feeling that Nyla Rose will retain. But I just have to go with Chris Statlander. Um, so let's see. Chat has uh, Nyla Rose. And yeah, I think the chat has uh, Ny- Nyla Rose. Um, let's see. Next, Darby Allen versus Sammy Guevara. I absolutely... This is the one match where I... It's kind of like a toss-up. For me, I think uh, Darby Allen is the hot card right now, but Sammy Guevara needs a victory. It's been, it's been like this. The inner circle is supposed to be the most dominant force in AEW, even bigger than the Elite, bigger than SEU, bigger than the Dark Order, bigger than every faction that there is. However, they've been protecting Chris Jericho. He's only lost one match. Um... And that was a tag team match. And he went to a tie. And they've been protecting Chris Jericho. Uh, Jake Hager hasn't been cleared to wrestle until this weekend. Which is going to be the next match we're going to be talking about. But since then, uh, Sammy Guevara has a 22% win ratio with his win-loss record. And... Uh, Pride and Powerful have a 59% win-loss ratio. Meaning they have more wins than losses. So, they've been picking up the losses at, for for the Inner Circle. And it's just... I don't know. I just kind of wish that they were more dominant. But the fact that, that each division, each storyline is just stacked with talent. And we want everybody to win. Uh, there, there's got to be some give and take here. So even though I want Sammy Guevara to pick up some wins, um, I'm gonna go with Darby Allen. Who you got? Yeah, I'm gonna have to go ahead and agree with you. And I got to be honest, a lot of it had to do with watching Dynamite and <laughs> just just being tickled that uh, Darby Allen could cut a promo using signs d- during the picture in picture. Uh, well, he stole wait. that from Sammy Guevara. He started doing that first. In the yeah, picture I in picture. Hadn't seen that before. So, uh, seeing that made me go, <laughs> that's funny. But it also made me go, how did they know that it was going to be picture in picture? I think they're told. Well, I so mean, here's the, here's the production-wise, yeah, but I it, it seems kind of take it out of the spontaneity of the moment if you're like okay i'm gonna wait until we go picture in picture and then then i'll have these signs ready right you yeah. know you get what i'm saying yeah I, i've been watching it on uh aew on the tnt drama website where they do the picture in picture but i'm more interested i like i always try to watch dynamite back by finding uh sources online that show the fight tv version where they don't go to commercial at all, and they just jump camera angles and whatnot, and they get full unrestricted access to the sound and everything. So I have yet to see that. I'm gonna try and find the uh, Dynamite episode from last night, uh, sometime tonight. Uh, but I'm gonna try and find a link that shows the Fight TV source just to just to see how different it is. But but yeah. Um, I believe uh, Sammy Guevara was the first to do that. And I think one of the weeks, um, I do remember seeing Hangman Page 
do it. He had a. That's when he started doing the alcohol bit, because he had it in his hand and he was showing the flashcards during a commercial break for that. So I thought that was really interesting. That I think that's sort of becoming a meme for picture in picture now, where they have somebody randomly read, you know, teleprompted cards. Uh, chat is Allen, or, or they're all in for Darby Allen as well. Sounds okay. like we got a good chat going tonight. Smart yeah. people. All right, Josh, go ahead and give us an ad break for our Twitter and all that stuff, and I'll go ahead and get the uh, the Discord link for people to join the Discord. Okay, if you are one of those people that lives in the Twitterverse, you can always follow me on Twitter at SkitComic, S-K-I-T-C-O-M-I-C. -I, I am not the prolific tweeter that uh, Mr. Ben is at Yobro MMO. That's at Yobro MMO on Twitter. He, uh, he basically tweets everything from, hey, I just watched this to, hey, I just ate this to... Hey, I just had a bowel movement. Ben is a <laughs> Ben is a uh, very very active tweeterer, tw Twitter Twitter tweeter guy. I not so much, but that also means I am not spamming your uh, Twitter timeline with weird things like, oh my God, Goldberg's champion! What the hell? And what did they do to AJ Styles? That was messed up. Or <laughs> Undertaker came back for this again? So, yeah. Uh, that is the kind of stuff that I won't be tweeting about. But every once in a while, <laughs> I'll, uh, you know, decide to indulge the, my uh, Twitter audience with my, my thoughts, my whims, and my fancies. And that is why you should follow me on Twitter. And, of course, if you're just looking for uh, excellent observations when it comes to pro wrestling and football, including the XFL and, and a lot of college stuff, Ben is the guy to follow at Yobro MMO. Yeah. So that is our uh, Twitters. Twitters. Awesome. All right. Uh, if you guys would like to help support uh, the podcast financially, you guys can go to patreon.com forward slash yo bro MMO. That's patreon.com forward slash yo bro MMO, where you can subscribe to us for um, $1, $5, $10, or $20 a month. You can cancel at any time. You can change the amount at any time, and they will always pull the funds from your credit card at the end of the month. So go ahead and subscribe to any amount that you guys can. We would greatly appreciate that. Um, right now, I'm trying to save up a bit of funds so that I can buy a one-year license for a, uh, a legitimate website. I'm looking at Squarespace. So in order to do that, I need 150 bucks to buy a Squarespace license for a full year. Why? So I want to create a full-blown like website. Bucks, man. Yeah. Uh, but I want I want to take I want to put that money aside so you know I can pay it off monthly, but I want to put the entire thing aside. Um, so that's a goal. So I'm just sitting on that. I just need about uh, maybe six months or less, depending if we get more patrons. But currently, at the pace we're going, six month wait until I can launch a full website with everything, where we can sell coffee mugs, T-shirts, and so on and so forth uh, with that that in mind as well and all right back to our pay-per-view predictions here we got jake hager versus dustin rhodes i think this is a really really good matchup for the story dustin rhodes said last night that he is going to give everything and then some that uh he is going to go out there and and fight like it's the last fight he'll ever have. But in the end, this is Jake Hager. Uh, unlike the situation that Jake Hager is in, um, 
Wardlow had his first match with Cody, but because of this, the 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 stipulation for that, Wardlow had to lose his debut match in AEW. There's no getting around that whatsoever. Personally, I didn't think that Cody Rhodes was going to pick up a clean victory by moonsaulting off of the top of the cage and getting the one, two, three right then and there. I thought Wardlow was going to running power bomb Cody into the steel cage and one side of the cage was going to fall. Uh, and Cody would, you know, get that, get that win that way. But when it made apparent that there is no escaping, it was a no escape cage match. Then I was like, okay, so there's going to be a winner for that. So on, unlike that, there is, there is no big stipulation in here for Jake Hager and Dusty Rhodes, uh, Dustin Rhodes, but Jake Hager can't lose his first match. Uh, this match would go, this win will not only be his first win in, in a pro wrestling match in a long time, but this will set up a good tone for him as he gets back into uh, training camp as he has a match just before, uh, as he has a fight coming up in Bellator just before the the uh, summer starts. I believe it's in May or late May or early June. So we better get as much Jake Hager as we possibly can before he gets back in the fight camp. So I got Jake Hager winning this, but I do see Dustin getting a lot of close close calls, like a you know two and a half or two point nine uh, uh, three count here. Uh, we do. I think this will show that even though Dustin is 50, he's still got a lot of gas in the tank. And I think he's already proved that. It's just that, you know, I think, I don't think he can take Jake Hager. And I do believe that this match will, uh, or this storyline will continue uh, forward. But I just don't see Jake Hager lose, dropping his first match. But Josh, go ahead. Who you got? Uh, I'm picking. Uh, I'm picking Jack. Jack Swagger. Oh, is that disrespectful to use his his WWE name? I believe instead of his chosen. I believe. Name? Uh, I believe Chris Jericho said that's all dead and buried. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I pick Jake Hager, and the way I see it playing out is this. Uh, Dustin gets some really good offense in early on, but then Jake completely takes control and dominates. He, it, you know, he needs to have an impressive showing because for 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 the story of this match, there's only one thing I want to see: a shattered dreams must occur. Yeah, I think uh, it's you'll probably see one of those in the first, we'll say, three minutes because. I anticipate, and you know, a story going like Jake kind of underestimates the older Rhodes mm. brother uh, at first, and uh, that quickly gets rectified after the first, you know, five minutes, and that's when he uh, he takes control and does not let up, and and Jake picks up the uh, submission victory. Okay. Let's see. Coming up next is the Tag Team Championship match. AEW Tag Team Championship where it's an all-elite affair. You got Kenny Omega and Hangman Page champions defending against the Young Bucks. I think this has I think this is gonna be my match of the night. It's also gonna be a spot fest. Um Man, you know what, Josh? Depending I think I will be extremely satisfied no matter what happens in this match. No matter who wins in this match, this is this whole story, it's all about Hangman for me. And he's one of my top 3 favorites in AEW. And I don't care where the, I don't care if he loses the tag titles, I don't care if he if he wins the tag titles. But I'm going to go ahead and say that he is he and Kenny Omega is going to retain, and I think it's going to be an accidental retain. Meaning, I think Kenny Omega is accidentally going to hit hit the Young Bucks, and Kenny's not going to cover to get the victory, 
and Hangman ends up uh, tagging himself in to do to finish the you know to to mop up, and I think that's when we're finally going to get uh, you know a little bit of dissension between Kenny and Hangman, and they're still champions. Um, so I do certainly do see that happening. So I'm going to get the uh, the champions currently. They're going to retain. Josh, who you got? I went in the other direction. I'm picking the Bucks because. Uh, Hangman's not going to be cool about any of it. And that includes maybe eyeballing his own partner, Kenny Omega, and, and, and casting uh, shadows of conspiracy theories. Like, you were just with them the whole time. And... Uh, he 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 goes uh, he goes full you know tinfoil hat, and it costs them the the championships, and the young bucks finally get their their first reign as and uh, as Hangman and uh, Kenny have a very public falling out. Yeah, like I said, either way. I will welcome both. Um, it, uh, but this is the route I'd rather go. I hope they win. I hope they win and then it, it causes further dissension between those two. And then they lose to the Dark Order. And then uh, that's when uh, they start their one-on-one rivalry with one another. And then during that time, during the Dark Order's reign... We'll have a build-up to the Young Bucks versus the Dark Order at the next pay-per-view. Then I think uh, that's when the Young Bucks will pick up a victory. Um, but either way, either way, I I'm all in on on the story on the most interesting story direction, not the best, but the most interesting story direction for Hangman Page. Um, all right, co main event time. Uh, probably the biggest storyline. And all of pro wrestling. MGF versus Cody Rhodes. I've been waiting for this for so long. And I know you are too. Not as much as me. But shockingly, I'm going to go with MJF. I think MJF is going to uh, halt Cody's winning streak right here. I got MJF. He's the future. I do believe that Cody will win the immediate matchup, but I don't think that match will happen too soon. It'll probably wait until May at uh, double or nothing. So I'm going to go with MJF, continue this feud, and then Cody gets the big pickup, vic- you know, gets the uh, big victory later on down the line. Josh, who you got? Who in their right mind would pick MJF? After everything that Cody's been through, man. He's been through so much. He's had to jump through so many hoops. It's time he got his hands on that little creep and showed him what for. The only logical choice in this whole matter is you have to pick MJF because that's who I'm picking. Cody Rhodes is such a fantastic booker. The way that he's been he's been creative with his storylines and putting everybody over even though even though he has a really good one probably one of the best uh win loss records uh in in AEW but when you take a look at how little he loses each and each and every one of those losses are very important losses mm-hmm. and it's all by design all by his design he reminds me of Triple H as NXT Triple H not old school, you know, political, you know, political power, big dog Triple H. He reminds right. me of NXT genius Triple H. And that's what that's what's making me feel like MJF has a seventy five percent shot. I want Cody to win, but if I'm thinking of how Cody's doing this, um, to draw this out even further, I think MJF is going to go over, and it's going to be interesting. I, you know, uh, MJF, he probably gets help from Warlow. Maybe MJF recruits another helper 
maybe MJF is slowly starting to show that maybe he wants to start a stable. Uh, I think Tony Schiavone, I think uh, he, he said this. I don't remember if it's uh, on Dynamite or uh, on, a, on a YouTube whether it's a, a vignette on AEW Dark, but it looks like uh, Butcher Blade and Bunny, they're they're breaking off to 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 just strictly do tag team stuff. Yeah, he mentioned so that I on Dynamite. Okay, so with that said, I do see MJF bring somebody in. I don't know if he'll do it on Saturday, but. I think uh, he's going to find a creative way, a way that we don't think or that we never thought of to actually get him a victory um, creatively against Cody. So that's why I see him winning, uh, even though I want Cody to win. It's just that, uh, you know, the genius mind of Cody Rhodes, the best thing that they can do is to book long term, not short term like WWE main roster has. So. I'm going to go with MJF. Uh, chat has Cody. Chat has Cody. Two. Two for Cody. Interesting. Can I, so, can I throw out my crazy, crazy speculation? Oh, by all means, go ahead. Okay, this is my a wild pick of the night for, you know, a uh, story. One, I will say that, like I said, I picked MJF to win, and I think it's going to be so much of a surprise that even he won't see his win coming. That <laughs> when his music hits and his name is called, he's going to be like, I won. I won! You know, just surprised. So, you mentioned someone, he, he might bring somebody else in. And I'm thinking, what if he doesn't bring somebody else in but somebody else kind of shows up anyway somebody else that is like I want to align myself with this guy so I am going to come and interfere on his behalf right mm -hmm. and what if that someone just I don't know recently signed a multi-year contract with AEW Lance Archer what if that someone was Lance Archer Ooh, juicy, juicy. Just comes in. Well, he is. He right is away. making his AEW Dynamite uh, debut in Denver, Colorado next Wednesday. So I'm all hyped for that. Hashtag everybody dies. What about this one, Josh? What if they keep, keep this one close to home? Considering how she's the big show of the women's division, no matter what company she's for, what if Brandy Rhodes does another heel turn? What if she sides with uh, MJF and make well, it even would, more personal? That would definitely fall under my prediction of MJF is shocked by his own victory. Yeah. Either way, this is the most important uh, storyline matchup in the entire company for me. And, and it's something that I'm most mostly invested in. Um, so yeah, my my speculation, my guess, uh, I know is really out there as far as Land Charger goes, but I mean, come on, what you know? Can you imagine though? <laughs> right. It's it's, it's probably not going to happen, but I would I would be freaking out, man. I'd be like, yes, <laughs> he's here and he's oh, like right there. Right up there with uh, the big boys. Immediately. I just submitted my picks to Discord and I uh, I deleted uh, I pushed enter too early. Alright. Um, let's see. Finally the main event Le Champion Chris Jericho. <laughs> what the fuck? Why is it doing this? I don't know. I, I, I'm looking at your picks right now, and you can't. Okay, there do we that. go. There we go. Okay. That no, I, like I highlighted, deleted. Okay, I, I control A, and then I select it. I push backspace, enter, and then I don't know. Like it control Z repasted itself back, and I was like, "What the hell?" 
it did it again. Okay, so <laughs> um, I'm going to go Chris Jericho on this. Um, and like you, you already brought him up. You think that he's going to assert himself to the MJF Cody storyline, but I don't think he's going to do this to join the inner circle. I think he's just going to come in and make an impact. I think he's going to attack Chris Jericho first to get the uh to get the disqualification victory for Chris Jericho and then he's going to beat the crap out of John Moxley because he has unfinished business with John Moxley. And my reason for picking Chris Jericho is Chris Jericho is going to retain via DQ all thanks to Lance Archer. As if you guys watch uh, the last couple of months on New Japan Pro Wrestling, Lance Archer and John Moxley have been wrestling over the IWGP United States Championship, which John Moxley currently holds. And it looks like I'm going to be the only one in our pay-per-view predictions league who's going to be picking Chris Jericho to retain. I think Chris Jericho is going to hold the title for a full year before he ends up losing. Um. Everybody thinks that, you know, back then, I think Mox, I think one month ago, Mox would have been the hot hand. It, he would have been a hot hand. But I think uh, the way that I see social media, the way that I see Chris Jericho or anybody in AEW making ESPN, Fox Sports, or, you know, sports radio talk shows and they talk about AEW. The first name that comes out of the mouth of guys like Rich Eisen, Golik and Wingo, um, and other guys that are synonymous with sports radio all over, depending on what part of the, the nation you live in, is Chris Jericho. What do you think about Chris Jericho? Chris Jericho is your first ever champion for your, for your company. Chris Jericho, Chris Jericho, Chris Jericho. And I think that's very important because a lot of people, Still don't know about AEW or are only just finding out about AEW. And I think that's still very important to have the biggest, most recognizable name as you possibly can. And I do believe Chris doesn't have to wait until October. Because I believe Chris Jericho won the belt in May of last year. Or May, June, or July of last year. So right around summertime... I think uh, that's when we're going to see, at double or nothing, Chris Jericho dropping the title in Chicago. Um, so with that said, uh, I, I do believe that Mox will continue to get another opportunity later on down. But uh, I don't know if Mox is going to pick up the win on Saturday. Uh, I wouldn't mind it. I wouldn't be surprised if Moxley ends up winning, but I really would like to see these guys feud for two to three months more. Um, anything that they can do to keep Kenny Omega away from that, because I do believe whether it be Chris or Moxley at that time, the slow build up to Kenny Omega as AEW champion is probably we're going to get a Daniel Bryan slash Kofi Kingston moment when that time comes, and it has to be special. So I don't want that happening too early. I think Chris Jericho is the strongest piece of the puzzle right now for AEW, and I want that choo-choo train to keep on going. It's just that I want the inner circle to be stronger. With that said, Chris Jericho has to retain, and that's why I'm going to go with Chris Jericho. Chat. Chat has Moxley, and Chat has Moxley twice. Josh, who do you got, and why? How do you see this match going down? What is the story you see going down the line after this match is over? Well, I am also choosing Moxley because, okay. well, you made some interesting points here. I am right now kind of on the fence over whether or not he walks out with the title because it, it it's really irrelevant when it comes to the picks. Mm -hmm. uh, I just need him to win. I did 
can be a DQ win. That's fine. He doesn't get the title, but he gets the victory. But as far as the story goes, it's been building up for quite a while, and it normally seems like it's now hitting a boiling point. It's it's reaching its head. But if they have something still left in the tank, if they can push this one more time, I think it would have to be with a Moxley TQ victory to give him, you know, the legitimate gripe about not being the champion. So, what I'm thinking is, okay, maybe Moxley doesn't walk out of Revolution as the AEW champion. But, what we will get is a, a John Moxley that is ready and willing to take whatever match that he and Chris Jericho have uh, coming up after this and give it like this really wicked stipulation and that I think uh, is is what I am waiting for now so I'm picking Moxley I will go ahead and say I don't think he's going to walk out champion but that's moot as long as he wins the match. If he if he wins the championship, find more power to him. I'll take that point too. But uh, I I don't see him being champion at the end. Of, but you know by the weekend we, weekend's end. Okay. Awesome. Um, which. Which match do you see being the longest? Uh, let's see. I think naturally Omega and Hangman and the Bucks are probably okay. going to get all the time. All right. Hopefully, I think uh, Cody and MJF or the AEW title. Either way, any one of the last three matches, I hope they get a decent amount. I hope all three of those last matches get. 20 minutes plus um all right that's pretty much it uh just to recap what the host has got joshua has seu pack nyla rose darby allen jake hager young bucks mjf john moxley i have seu pock chris statlat no i got dark order i see I, I wasn't paying attention the dark order pock chris statlander Darby Allen, Jake Hager, Omega Hangman, MGF, and Chris Jericho. Um, so that is our picks, Josh. Before we go until Saturday night, uh, who or what do you want to talk about? Next? Okay, a couple of things have been brought up. Uh, first of all, the WWE did another Blood Money show in Saudi Arabia today. <laughs> I'm not going to mince words. You know, they're taking money from government that killed an American journalist. They can go to hell for that. And as well as other things like Katie Vick. But that's, that's you know, we, we could make a whole Jeez. list. Uh, and during today's show, there were a couple of notable title changes. One of them being uh, The Miz and John Morrison winning the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. It was SmackDown, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. And uh, The Fiend, the guy they've been building up and building up and building up, loses the Universal Championship to Bill Goldberg. I said this for the last couple of weeks. He's in a lose-lose situation because there was no way he... As Universal Champion at WrestleMania. So it's basically pick your poison. I've been saying this for the last few weeks in the podcast. It's either do you hurt do you hurt Roman Reigns again by letting him go over the fiend and being the one, the superhuman, to beat a superhuman 
character like the fiend and have the fans poo poo all over him with the negative reactions after he came back from valiantly defeating cancer or do you let a legend like bill goldberg take the belt off of the fiend put the fiend on the shelf for a while so that we can get it out of the back of the minds of everybody for as long as possible or as much as possible and have him reinsert himself back in as a force to be reckoned with at a later time and then have Roman and Bill Goldberg, which obviously has uh, has a storyline from the Royal Rumble uh, to continue off of and have that be one of the main points to sell tickets for this year's WrestleMania. From what I heard, or not heard, but from what I've read, ticket sales at Tampa have been very, very slow for WrestleMania this year. So maybe putting the belt on Bill Goldberg, probably say, you know, like, oh, Goldberg's going to be at Mania. Let's go, you know, get some of the older crowd to buy tickets. I don't know. That's just how I feel. Yeah, I don't like it. Diddle. And then, of course, they had the the big gauntlet match, right? And it looked like AJ Styles had won that. And then... Gong! Undertaker comes out. Oh, he got added to the match? Yeah, he won the big trophy. Hmm. So he comes out, uh, apparently lays out AJ lickety split, and he gets to take home the big trophy. And if there's anything Undertaker's been known for, it's wanting to win big trophies. <laughs> so, yeah, that was Super Showdown in a nutshell. And if you uh, uh, feel like you missed something, um,. Okay, cool. Uh, but if you feel like me and you're like, you know what? I didn't miss anything. Uh, mm -hmm. More power to you. We'll be uh, checking out, I guess, SmackDown to find out what the fallout of all of this is. Because I don't watch the, oh. I don't watch the Saudi shows. So um, I don't know. Uh, they don't have uh, Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful.com posted recently said uh, they're going to make it back to the States in time for SmackDown. So it's not like we're going to have an NXT invasion angle to build off of to get the best to get another best of SmackDown episode. So that sucks. Um, but yeah, uh, another quick note. Uh, Samoa Joe um, at first a couple of days ago. Uh, he was filming a commercial where he was doing his own stunts. He ended up landing, taking a table spot, and cracked the back of his head. Uh, it was said that uh, he would be going in to get a CTE scan. Uh, no word on that yet. If he has suffered a concussion at all, I don't know. I haven't read or seen, found any updates to that. But now, as of 24 hours ago, uh, it looks like uh, he failed it a wellness inspection so he is suspended indefinitely immediately for violating the wellness policy 30 days man uh, um which is unfortunate First violation, because in 30 days yeah because it's always something whenever he comes back from a major vic uh injury he gets put in the program gets built up and bam he's out again it's like uh it's it's like Hideo Itami. They yeah. can't get they can't get him to you know find any consistency due to injuries or whatever. Uh, Bobby Roode finally came back from his uh, wellness violation suspension. Shinsuke Nakamura is injured. Apparently he, I like I said, I haven't been. I only been watching stuff on YouTube for Raw and SmackDown for the last three weeks. Um, apparently Braun Strowman power slammed him on on a piano, and uh, yeah, that was pretty sweet. He took he and he, I don't know, 
Shinsuke hurt his hip and the back of his head during that incident. So yeah, the the piano did not crumble. It did not give at all. Yeah. So uh, while he's up and around, uh, he's not clear to wrestle for an undisclosed amount of time. To you know, for an undisclosed amount of time, Possible which is unfortunate. Yeah. So uh, that's that's uh, pretty much it. I do have one more thing that I want to touch on before we get out of here. One more thing. (laughs) And you're going to think this sounds nuts, but it's about impact. Ooh. I know you didn't expect to hear me say anything like that, did you? What are they going to do to unify the, the knockouts women's championship? To the world uh, impact world championship i have no idea but i do know that <laughs> tessa will be defending the impact world championship against taya valkyrie uh next next week yeah and that's what i was alluding to people are losing their minds on uh yeah. the social medias how could two yeah. women be fighting for a men's title? It's like, first of all, it's not a men's title. Let, let's get that clear. It is a world championship. Nowhere does it say a penis world championship. It's I, I, the best champion in the entire company championship. Right. It doesn't <laughs> specifically say the best under this category. And there are, you know certain world titles that do kind of arbitrarily have that you know something extra like heavyweight champion so Mm. I guess technically you're supposed to have some sort of um, minimum weight limit uh, for that you know group but Mm -hmm. for the impact world championship it's it's basically uh, it's impact saying this is the best wrestler in the world under contract with us and yeah. plus they're doing things they're doing everything they possibly can to stay alive like they have been over the last 15 years it's like yeah. when you think they're about to go out of business something happens and the interest is barely enough to keep them going for another year or two until they find another way to re revitalize their it's it, it's nuts it's crazy it's like they're the little train that kept on going so what I'm saying is for all of you people out there that are getting upset because two women are fighting for a world championship, stop getting your panties in a bunch. It's supposed to be two of the best representatives of the company going head-to-head uh, for their top title. It just so happens these two people are women. And you know what? At some point... And I guarantee you this. This is a, this is a virtual guarantee. At some point, the title is going to go back to being fought for pretty much exclusively by ma- by men. Yeah, yep. it's going to happen. It's 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 going to lose its uh, female champion. It's going to lose female challengers. This hmm. is a a blip on on wrestling history. It's not a bad thing by any means, but it's definitely not something I can see as being here to stay. Because let's face it, Tessa is special uh, when it comes to to this regard, being entertaining and able to work. So uh, when her time's up with the title. It's going to go back to being the dudes fighting for the title. She'll she'll get a shot every now and then. She might even get another run. Who knows? But as of now, just enjoy this. Enjoy and the honeymoon period. If you can't, wait. Just wait. Because it, it'll go back. I promise. There wouldn't be any questioning or hooting and hollering about this ordeal had China won the WWF title instead of the Intercontinental Championship way back then. That's for sure. 
yeah, there were there were a couple of women in the WWE over the years that it made perfect sense to shoot them up to the top. Let me see. I can think of three women right off the top of my head that could have easily won the WWF title had the storyline and the circumstance made it a perfect opportunity to do so. And it will be China, Beth, Beth Phoenix, Phoenix, and uh, Jacqueline. Yeah. They were all dominant. And and, and even though I, I... God, don't... I hope this isn't the one episode Vince doesn't listen to. But I can <laughs> even almost, almost see Charlotte being in, put into that uh, category. Let her get a victory over Roman Reigns, and then I'll, I'll jump on board that bandwagon. But with <laughs> that said, uh, Josh and I, well, I definitely will uh, be back here live on Twitch for the Backstage Slam episode number 182. Uh, immediately right after AEW Revolution. Uh, you can catch it out on uh, twitch.tv forward slash yo bro MMO. That's twitch.tv forward slash yo bro MMO. Go ahead and hit that follow button. Or if you got Amazon slash Twitch Prime, go ahead and click that subscription and give me that free $5 sub. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, we will be back. In about 48 hours, give or take a few minutes here or there. Um, with that said, Josh, you have anything else? Nope. All right. And we will see you guys on the flip side. Too sweet, everybody. Too sweet.